And hello everyone, and welcome back to another episode of Gustavo's World. And today we're celebrating Leif Erikson's day. His real name was Liefer, but anyway, and this is Burbujita, your co-host. Hi everyone! She just wanted to say hello and uh, wish you a good voyage. You must be wondering, right? What did Leif Erikson, Christopher Columbus, Saint Olaf, and Bluetooth technology have in common? Well, let's watch the video. The video is about to start. Don't forget to subscribe and turn on notifications. There we go! So, who is Leif Erikson? His real name was Leifer, by the way. And you might be under the impression that Christopher Columbus discovered America. But what if I tell you that an Icelander was probably here in America 500 years before Christopher Columbus? What if I tell you that Bjarni Hergelson knew about the Americas even before Leif Erikson. But wait, what if I tell you that also other people came to America before Leif and Columbus? The New Advent Catholic Encyclopedia and other sources speak of the Irish, Welsh, and Scots being the first white men to come to the Americas before Columbus and Erikson, perhaps as many years before Columbus, all the way down in Florida? This stuff is for another video. And there are another theories that Chinese came to America on the west shores before Columbus. Okay, let's go back to the proven theory according to the Icelandic sagas. Norwegians claim that Leif Erikson is Norwegian, but he was Icelandic. And he was born in the area that today we know as Iceland. Well, Leif Erikson, which was commanded by the King Olaf of Norway, I'll tell you what for. And you won't believe it because it's not what you think. So King Olaf of Norway, replaced by the assassinated King Harald the Bluetooth of Norway. Yes, Olaf replaced Harald the Bluetooth. Yes, King Harald had a Bluetooth and that is why he was called so. And there is technology today as well, because of his success to unify all Scandinavia. It, this was reflected in the effort that scientists were trying to make to unify all these devices, you know, your computer to your phone or your phone to an earphone and stuff. So they liked um, Harald the Bluetooth uh, unification and they did that with this technology. So that's why it's called Bluetooth. And you might be wondering why am I talking about this King Olaf and Bluetooth? Wait, so anyway. We all might think that Leif was this warrior Viking, which he was, but you know, you might be in the little bit uh, wrong side of the presumption. This family, you know, all um, Leif Erikson's family, was very fierce since almost all these people were explorers and had a problem with killing people when they got them upset. So we also have to go in the context of the times where people could probably kill you if they didn't like what you said or whatever, right? But these people was a little bit too much and that's why, look. So starting from Nadod, from Norway, which is a distant relative from Leif Erikson, and he's the one that actually founded Iceland. So, so we have a couple of generations after, and we found a Thorvald Asvaldsson, which is Leifur's grandfather, which was exiled from Norway due to his bad temper and the killing of people. He left to Iceland with his son Eric the Red. Eric the Red, following the steps of his father for killing a few people, was exiled from Iceland and went on to settle Greenland with his son Leif. So Eric the Red was the father of Leif Erikson. Okay, let's talk about King Olaf Tryggvason. So he was the king of Norway and uh, when he was young, he spent time in Normandy, France. And this is when he got introduced to Christianity and he chose to switch 
Nordic uh, beliefs and convert it into Christian. So King Hakon gained large unpopularity, which was the king of the times of Norway, and people started to reveal against him. So that is when Olaf, that comes from a noble blood of Norway, he just went back to Norway and uh, replaced King Hakon. He was immediately accepted. One of the great things that King Olaf did is to unite, uh, you know, Denmark and Norway, but also is to, you know, propagate Christianity all over Scandinavia. So this is where all this saga really start. Leif Erikson's first expedition or navigation was to go to Norway at age 24 and offer King Olaf with some gifts. In his way there, they got lost and they got stuck on the Hebrides for a month where he had his only known son and his name was Thorgils. King Olaf received him afterwards and realized that he was Eric the Red's son and took him immediately into liking of Leif. King Olaf offered baptism to Leif Erikson and he accepted. King Olaf then sent Leif with a priest back to Greenland, evangelized and baptized as many people as possible. After returning to Greenland, Leif got restless about the lands that Bjarni Helgelson spoke so much about and brought his ship and did the same route. And then 600 miles west, he found land with glaciers and rocks, which look a little bit different of what Bjarni told him. This land has just laughs and snow, and look at this, it was made of a big slab rock. They named it Heluland, or in English would be Slabland. We believe it's the Baffin Island in Canada. He then sailed south and found beaches and trees and called this a Markland, which would be woodland. We believe this is the eastern shores of Canada. Then two days south east of sailing, he got to an island that had firm line behind. This land was so perfect. They built a house and settled there for a couple of winters. Once there, they noticed that the days lasted a little bit longer during the winter, something that in Iceland and in Greenland and in Norway doesn't happen. So Tyrker was some sort of like slave from uh, Eric the Red and Liv Erikson. So this man was German and he was helping Liv Erikson a lot. Actually, he helped uh, in Liv Erikson's uh, growing up. Tyrker got lost in this new land and they were very worried and suddenly they found him. So when they found him, he, this Tyrker guy, was so happy that, you know, he says that there were so many, but so many grapevines all over the place. And this is how this land was baptized as a Vinland or Wineland. Now we know that this place that they call Vinland is probably Lanzo Meadows in Newfoundland. Well, when spring came, everyone was ready to go back home to Greenland and Iceland. So the only people to return to Vinland was other settlers with Lifur's sister as well. And her name was Freydis Eric's daughter. She being acclaimed as one of the most fierce Vikings of all times. Number three in the top 10, believe it or not. Anyway, unfortunately, Vinland didn't take as well with all the Vikings after all. Sagas about the natives and friendliness kept people away, I guess. The interesting part of all this is that the Roman Catholic Church really appreciated the boost of baptisms in the Crusades time and in the Norse world thanks to King Olaf. And believe it or not, now King Olaf Tryggvason is a saint. He was canonized in the year 1031 by Pope Alexander III, making him a universally recognized saint of the Catholic Church. Fascinating, huh? So Saint Olaf was this King Olaf the Viking. Who would know? So let's talk really quickly about Liv Erikson's statue because when I went to Reykjavik, I saw a statue and I took a picture there and everything, but um, I didn't know that there is about 39 statues from Liv Erikson all over the world. 
all over the world. Yes. And then the statue in Reykjavik has a replica. And uh, the statue in Reykjavik was made by the, uh, his name is Alexander Sterling Calder Sr. And he is the father of Alexander Calder Jr. And Alexander Calder Jr. is an artist that makes this beautiful big mobile things that you see in the museums so you know they're artists so this is so fascinating to me that president lyndon johnson of the united states in the year 1964 october 9 proclaimed that it would be the leaf erickson day so this is very touching because i kind of after investigating so much about leaf erickson now i'm like I feel like he's part of my family or something, and I'm so proud that they made this proclamation. And I have to read it. I have to read it. So it says that, like that, 36th President of the United States, 1963 to 1969, Proclamation 3610, Leif Erikson's Day, 1964. September 02, 1964, by President of the United States of America, a proclamation. Whereas Leif Erikson, Norseman, son of Eric the Red, and great seafarer, in the year 1000, valiantly explored the shores of the American continent, and whereas the intrepid exploits of the Vikings of Erickson's time strikes a responsive chord in the hearts of all the American people, who as a nation are today embarked upon an adventurous exploration of the unfathomed realms of space and whereas many of our citizens of Scandinavian descent take inspiration from annually celebrate Leif Erikson's momentous voyage, and whereas the Congress of the United States, by joint resolution approved September 2nd of 1964, has authorized the President of the United States to proclaim October 9 in each year of the Leif Erikson's Day. New, therefore, I, Lyndon B. Johnson, President of the United States of America, do hereby designate Friday, October 9th of 1964 as Leif Erikson's Day and direct government officials to display the flag of all government buildings on that day. Further, I invite the people of the United States to honor on that day the memory of Leif Erikson by holding appropriate exercises and ceremonies in schools and churches or other suitable places. Who knew all this? I hope you find this video helpful and please share it because Columbus came a little bit late to the party, my friends. And if you love the video, please subscribe, like, comment, and everything. And see you in the next Gustavo's World video. Thank you for watching. Please don't forget to subscribe and turn on notifications. That's clicking on the little bell. Comment all you want. If you enjoyed the video, please give it a like. Don't forget to subscribe to grow the community. <laughs> and also, don't forget to follow our social media. And if you want to go ahead and share this video in all your platforms, share the love. Till next time! Bye.